Today we're going to be eating some of the top foods here in Berlin. From what we've heard, you can't come to Berlin without trying these. Our sausage is covered under that delicious looking pile of sauce. This is for sure the best currywurst I've ever had. I can't yeah, like peanut box. Oh, another surprise. It tastes kind of different a little bit. That yellow sauce is the secret sauce. These are actually called here in Berlin, Pfannkuchen. Our plan now is actually to meet up with some local Berliners, the people we're talking about. People reserve, they queue, they, yeah, you have to reserve ahead because otherwise there's no way You're not that you just them. show up and get what you want. That's the typical Berlin soft drink. Boulette just means a uh, small ball in like bullet in, mm -hmm. in French, yeah. then it became a standard in the Berlin kitchen. We're going to be filming them so that the next time you come to Berlin, you can try them too. Our sausage is covered under that delicious looking pile of sauce. Yeah. yeah. Those ladies were working furiously fast and one of the ladies actually had a Currywurst 36 tattoo on her forearm, which was pretty hilarious. We had the option to get one with the skin or without skin and I read online that the without the skin was actually a really nice one. So that's what we tried today because I don't think we've ever tried a Currywurst without the skin on it. Why do we recommend you having Currywurst when in Berlin? Well, because it was actually invented here. Back in 1949, the story goes that there was a German woman who obtained ketchup from British soldiers. She then ended up making currywurst from it and voila, it took off, everyone loves it and it's one of the most popular street foods here in Germany. Basically, it's an iconic thing, something you just gotta do when you're here in Berlin. When Tanner made the order, this was the only currywurst available to order on the menu other than having the skin on versus the skin off. We also made an order with pommes or french fries, so that's what you can see here in addition and then we put the mayo and ketchup on top of the fry. Honestly, our very first time trying currywurst was a a long time ago when we first moved here to Germany. We were in Bomberg. Gotta check out that video. It's actually our most popular video and for good reason. Germans love their curry burst. We ourselves like the dish, but we don't love it. I know, don't hate us on that, but maybe this will be the dish to change our minds. Going in for the first bite here. It smells really nice. Honestly, it doesn't really taste like ketchup to me at all because of all the spices. It's a really good sauce, a really good mix, and honestly, the currywurst itself is by far the best texture of all of the other currywurst that we've had. And compared to that one that we had in Bomberg, this is definitely better by far. You can see a lot of the different spices right on top of the sauce here. Yeah, it's really good. The fries are really good. They're well cooked. It's good mayo, good ketchup. Overall, a really fun thing to experience here. Okay, here's my bite. Mm. That's really good. Like we mentioned, we don't get this often because the Duna takes the place as our favorite street food here in Germany, but this is for sure the best currywurst I've ever had. For sure. There's not great options of where to eat. It's our only downfall about some of these street food places. You kind of have to stand with kids. If you have kids, you know. It's just not as easy. But we have finished the meal, or it's almost done. Proof. We were just talking about how it truly is like the best one we've ever had. Like the sauce, the tomato sauce is much better than most ketchups we find here in Germany. I would definitely agree. Not bagging on it at all, but definitely just one of the better flavoring ketchups and curry powder mixtures. So, yeah. well done on that. It's not too strong in the curry department. It's so good. Bless you. <laughs> it really is so good. Wow, it's even on a plate. Sure. Mm. The mayo sauce on Willis, it's really good. There's a lot of dill in it, but it's nice. So if it's the same sauce that's on our tuna. Mm. It tastes kind of different a little bit. It is different than the other ones we've had, huh? Better, different. Huh, better. So next up, of course, we're gonna try the other most popular street food, basically in Germany. That's really different. That's also invented here in Berlin, the Duna. This was invented by a Turkish migrant who lived in Berlin who wanted to create a fast food for Germans. So there's a distinct difference here between other Turkish meals versus the Duna, and that is that the Duna is all of the meat and the sides inside the bread. The Turkish kebab is outside of the bread. That is the difference. I can't wait to dive in because they brought out our food and it looks 
It's huge, you guys. We had to set Noah down because there's no way that was not going to be a complete mess. Looking here, we've got a lot of stuff packed in this bread. So the bread's fairly thin. It's got a nice crispy layer on the top, sesame seeds, black and white on the top. And there's a lot of things that are just different here. I'm seeing cubed potatoes that have been like roasted or fried, a whole bunch of different vegetables, cucumbers, tomatoes, shredded lettuce, but the sauce, it looks like a ketchup sauce to me. Um, it's probably like a chili sauce. Tanner, do you know? Tanner did the order for it, but I don't know, I guess we'll find out. The feta cheese, there's like a couple sprinkles of it. Where we live and what we're used to is like the square feta cheeses that you put on top and then definitely no red sauce and most definitely not the potatoes. This is definitely new but fun for us. Also, this is a chicken meat and where we live in Grafenbeer, there's a lot of duna that's made with turkey meat. We actually hadn't had a duna with chicken meat until we came to Berlin. It's been two years, you guys. Since we've lived in Germany, that was our first. Okay. Oh, another surprise. Is that mustard? There's a yellow sauce. Wow, let's dig in. This is gonna be such a mess. Messy, in the city or in the but country? really good. I don't think I got a lot of the sauce, or maybe I did. I don't know, because there were so many flavors going on. Yeah. I'm gonna take another bite to see. Is that mustard? Like, I can't decide. It's so good. That yellow sauce is the secret sauce. It's not mustard. It's got like a sweetness to it. Oh man. Oh man. In addition to the many food recommendations that we had yeah. while being here in yeah, Berlin, so a shawarma fun. was definitely on the top of that list. So we decided, since we were so close, to come and grab the shawarma from a very popular place that had really great reviews. And when I was in there, it was very busy again from locals just coming in and out. And there was just a lot of movement. Honestly, it was kind of crazy. And I had to wait probably 20 minutes just to get this one shawarma because they had that many orders coming in and out. So the shawarma that I got was lamb and veal. It's really nice and tender the meat, and it has tomatoes. It looks like a little bit of cilantro, onion, and a yogurt sauce inside. And honestly, really happy. The only thing that would maybe make this a little bit better is if there was a little bit more sauce and vegetables. But this is the first bite, so maybe down below it has some of that too. And since it's breakfast time, we decided we're going to start off this morning with some iconic treats here in Berlin, which when we first learned about these, they were called Berliners or Klapfen. But these are actually called here in Berlin, Pfannkuchen, which is a little bit interesting because when we were back in Ulm, that's actually what they called crepes, was Pfannkuchen. We went to a restaurant and got one for Willa. It was huge, but the name of the restaurant had Pfannkuchen in there as well. It's not a small crepe. A big. This is big. What kind did we get? Nutella? This is a lot of creep. This is like... As of you. Yeah! A little bit interesting that the names are slightly different across Germany, but nonetheless, we're excited to dive into these. These are filled with strawberry, so can't wait to get started. This is not... For those of you who don't know, a Pfannkuchen or a Berliner is a donut filled with some sort of like marmalade jelly. This one looks very light and fluffy. It has a sugar glaze on the outside and right here you can see a little red spot where they have the strawberry filling. So where we're from, these are called Krapfen and they are a lot bigger, usually almost twice the size of this at the bakeries. So this is a little cute one, small one, definitely a little pricier than the other ones as well. It looks a little darker than strawberry, but still this is really soft texture. It's very sweet inside, very nice way to start off. The day. Our plan now is actually to meet up with some local Berliners, the people we're talking about, not the donuts. They're actually going to be bringing us some donuts to try from their favorite family local bakery. So it's going to be fun to do a little bit of a comparison and taste test multiple Van Kuchen here in Berlin. I'm really liking that granulated sugar on the top. Yum. Okay, we've met up with our friends and you guys, these look so good and very different from the ones that we got. These have like an icing on the top, darker in color. You can still see the middle is a little bit lighter in color, so you can kind of see that line there, but they look really good. Do you want a donut? <laughs> Case, you said there was two different kinds here? 
These are two different kinds. This is a traditional one with a plum jam. In this little bag we have mixed red berries. Yeah, they just call it jam. These are a favorite, a regional favorite. People queue around the block whenever it comes to, you know, those those dates when we eat pancake uh, pancakes, donuts, Berliners, <laughs> like around 11th of November, Fasching, like Fat Tuesday or New Year's Eve. People reserve, they queue. They, yeah, you have to reserve ahead because otherwise there's no way You're not that you just them. show up and get what you want. It's a family-owned chain. They have uh, a couple of shops in Brandenburg and the south of Berlin. So luckily if you are around, you have a couple different places to go and try and get them back. These are a big hit. Yeah, definitely a family we would, favorite. Yeah, we would have never known about these without a local, so we're gonna try it. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad. It's so good. This is why I like them so much because they have the icing and the plum jam. Because in Berlin, actually, to distinguish the two, traditionally it is plum jam with granulated sugar and the, uh, the mixed berry jam with the icing. But I like icing and plum jam. Because so this is this a bakery unique all the time, all the time. combination. <laughs> yes. That's why. It's more dense than the other mm, ones. Yeah. Like the other ones were fluffier. Yeah, yeah I, I thought actually that was really nice and <laughs> um, a little bit unusual, but I liked it a lot. Different variety. Also, they were very small. Yeah. So I haven't actually seen that. There's the small size. Just show me where you got that. <laughs> yeah. That's the typical Berlin soft drink. Boulette just means a uh, small ball in, like boulette in, mm -hmm. in French. Yeah. And it goes back to maybe the Huguenot refugees, but for sure the Napoleonic. Then it became a standard in the Berlin kitchen. It's um, ground meat. Sometimes it's mixed pork and beef. Sometimes it's just beef. Okay. Two eggs. Did you say one. breadcrumbs? No, no breadcrumbs. No breadcrumbs. I think I heard some people use some breadcrumbs, but everybody I know, it's um, you use an old bread roll, like a schrippe, mm. a brötchen. Oh, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, but these are not old. These are not old, no, no. <laughs> they're, they're these are and, then you soak, <laughs> and then you soak it in milk and kind of squeeze out the excess, and that goes into yeah. the mixture. Kind Oregano, like salt, mm. pepper, bit of cumin, a bit of paprika, also onions, uh, and it's important that you don't put them in raw, You kind of sweat them first. Then you I mean, just make a little, small bowls small and you pat them a little bit and uh, And then yeah. you just fry them, yeah? yeah. yeah. When do you eat the um, bulletin? Anytime. You can eat it as a hot lunch or like a main meal. So that would be bulletin with red cabbage and potatoes. Mm -hmm. That would be a typical meal. Like my grandmother would have made that. Yeah. Otherwise, just like this, maybe without the potato salad, maybe on a road trip. Okay, just, yeah. You know, but you just have them cold a, and yeah, just as they go. Just as a small yeah. snack or a picnic. Just the, just like this. Just like today. Doing. I've got my plate here with the bulletin and the two different types of potato salad. The texture honestly is a little bit different than what I was expecting. I was expecting pretty much like a meatball or like a hamburger patty type of a texture, but this one was a little bit softier, a little bit like airier, but really nice. The different spices really coming out there, so I'm a fan. And now this time with a little bit of Tommy mustard. Next time I'm going to their potato salad. I've never seen potato salad with apples in it and it gets me really excited because I do love the idea of having a crunchy apple. It's nice having the crunch, a fun new flavor. The second one has a little bit of yogurt, has a little bit of mayo, and also some pickles and apples too. Also very nice, definitely the flavors that I'm most used to having like egg and mayonnaise in a potato salad, so fun to have the two different types. For our drink, we were told this is a very common, a very famous Berlin drink, Fassbrause, which literally translates to barrel soda. Mm. That is very different than what I was expecting to feel. <laughs> not so much like carbonation to it, which is nice because I'm not a huge fan of carbonation. That's really good though. This might be my favorite drink in Germany that I've tried, which is not saying I guess too much since I haven't tried too many, but <laughs> out of all of them, this is definitely one of my favorite ones. We just got ourselves some vegan donuts that look and smell <laughs> incredible. <laughs> what if you ate it all? Well, you might get a tummy ache. Should we share and just have a little of each of them? We can have all the donuts together. Yeah. We're at Bremen Balls Donuts and this place is busy right now. We've heard that these are some of the best donuts around. They all want donuts, I know. Look at all of those people. Like a dozen people that just came in right after us. We got a raspberry pistachio, a bean and stitch, and a peanut butter and chocolate fudge. So it's gonna be really amazing. Yeah. Well, we've made it back to the apartment for the evening. We covered a lot of ground today and it was really fun to be able to see different parts of Berlin and just like how drastic it was between one region to the other. Now it's time to turn in for the night and I couldn't help myself but go to Kaufland 
and get some Fospalza, which happens to be my new favorite drink that I've tried on the trip. So thank you friends for showing me this. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and like this video. It really helps us out. We'll see you in the next one.